Hello and welcome back to BFG Online 8. We have our next run ready to go here with Vengeful Guardian Moonrider, but before that, we have a 30 euro anonymous donation without a comment. So thank you very much for your 30 euros, brings our total to 745. It's it's indeed very nice. Let's let's keep pushing that number up. Gonna make everyone happy. Well, without further ado, let's see some Vengeful Guardian Moonrider on PlayStation 5 with Ishma. Absolutely. Hello, everybody. Uh, like Double just said, this is Vengeful Guardian Moonrider. It's a small indie game that released at the start of this year, so it's kind of still brand new, I want to say. So you might have not actually seen it before. Actually, I think the first showing that we have of this game was at IndieThon two weeks ago. But uh, here we are. Um, it's basically an action platformer, kind of like Contra that you just saw being run by Linkermeister before this one. Similar way, kind of. But this time it's like Mega Man Cross with Shinobi, if you know that series, back on the Sega Genesis, I think it was. Anyway, we're just gonna hop straight into the game. We are starting from a fresh save file with no upgrades and anything unlocked. And immediately you can kind of see what this level select screen, uh, where the Mega Man influence comes from. However, we can only select one stage at the start. So this is basically the introduction stage. We have to clear that one to be able to progress to the other ones. <clears throat> So let's jump right into here. Time has not started yet. Don't worry about that because we are first in our power module layout a screen where you don't actually have any, you know, just yet because it's sort of the game, and it, but it does give you that screen anyway at the start of it. And uh, as soon as I press the button here, time will start. So let's get into the actual run in three, two, one, go. Alright, so a little bit of, uh, you know, intro stuff here happening. Basically, we are the Moonrider, which is our character. Uh, we have been working for this uh, bad regime. Basically, we have been working for the bad guys. They were doing uh, bad uh, stuff. And, uh, you know, basically, Moonrider's conscience kicked in and he didn't want to do that anymore. Went into a little bit of a... I don't, know, I don't want to say coma or anything, but you know, he had some issues. He had to be recalibrated in this weapons lab, but things went wrong and he has now gone rogue and fighting against his former employers, as it just happens in stories like these, right? Uh, but you can already, I guess, see the Contra influence and everything. You know, we have um, Running Slash that I will heavily use throughout the run because it deals a lot of damage. We have this downward kick, we can run, we can do all sorts of cool stuff, and we're already at the first mini boss of the game. Uh, the goal here is to hit this laser can that will come up from the ceiling a couple of times to make it so that it actually hits that shield. You can do that. Very good. Ah. Missed one shot. Oh, there we go. Okay. Not the best fight, but oh, there we go. So basically how that happens is the laser will fire after a couple of seconds on its own. And when you hit it a bunch of times, so you kind of want to time it that uh, it hits the shield on its own. And afterwards you have hit it enough that it actually starts shooting on its own again, hitting the shield a second time. So you need four shots of the cannon against uh, the shield to destroy it. And here we're gonna actually pick up our first power chip or power module, the MP region chip. And uh, I guess as you can already tell by the name and by the description here, it makes it so that you will cover MP passively all throughout the run. I think it's at one point of MP like every five seconds or something like that. Uh, you can see our MP bar in the left corner, in the upper left corner there. It's the blue bar, because of course it is a blue bar. And MP allows us to use our sub weapons. At the moment, we only have the Moon Spear, and we will get more as we progress through the game. Here we're coming up on the first actual boss, or end boss of the run. This is Geno Queen. And uh, she's, uh, she's a big lady. We want to go ahead and hit her hand four times if we can make it. Yeah, that's good. And then do. Ah. ah, messed up the quick kill slightly because I didn't get uh, that one point of damage in there when she had her mouth open. But there's a back of it, just slash her hand open and then she will scream again because, you know, she's in pain and then we can kill her. So since I didn't get the one second kill, that's like, I don't know, 8 to 10 seconds loss or something. It's not too harsh, but obviously, you know, if you were to go on and uh, be on the world record pace or something, you wouldn't want to get that. Because after a while, your time in the first couple of stages will matter a lot. Anyway, that is the first stage out of the way. Now we have actual um, access to the level select screen. 
And the first stage I'm gonna select is uh, you want the little city because you want to go ahead and kill a photo drifter first because you get a very nice ability um, from him. Now the first or the way these levels work is they are always split into two stages. Um, there will be like a mini boss at the end of the first stage and then the actual boss at the end of the second stage and uh, well there, there are certain differences between the stages themselves like the first stage in the city is this auto scroller bike stage and then we get an actual you know platform stage in second stage now this isn't a true auto scroller at the moment like the way it works is i actually have to go ahead and kill the enemies that are actually fighting me so to speak like you can see a couple of these bikers you know like this guy right there he doesn't do anything he just drives in a straight line so to speak to the end of the screen and uh, that tells me i actually do not have to concern myself with that guy because he will be off screen anyway so i only have to shoot the enemies that actually stay on screen because if i don't kill them uh, we actually don't progress through the stage. So what I want to do here is actually kill the enemies that come on screen as fast as possible. Unless I know that they will, you know, drive off by themselves anyway. Also, this is the moment where I want to give, you know, a shout out to the music of this game because it's great. Like, uh, when I saw the first trailers for this game, I was like, oh yeah, you know, this game looks kind of cool. I will probably go ahead and pick it up at some point. But the music really sold me on it. And uh, this is also the first stage where, you know, people in my chat usually go ahead and get out their cat gem emotes and stuff like that. So if you feel inclined to, you know, pop along to the music, go ahead and let me see those emotes in chat right now. Because there isn't really a lot happening right here, you know, we're just driving along, jamming, killing one or two mini bosses. I mean, this is basically a mini mini boss, so to speak, because, I mean, you saw how quickly we got rid of that guy, right? Um, so yeah, double. If you have anything to say right now, I think it would be a good time because, you know, we're just driving along for another minute or two here. Right. Well, uh, one thing I want to uh, wanna tell people about is, uh, is, you know, if you're seeing these events and if you... Uh, if uh, this is piquing your interest, if you so if you wanted to participate in the BSG event, check out BSG Annual 2023. This week-long marathon will run from the 13th to the 19th of August, and submissions are still open for about a week. They're open till April 2nd. More info about the event can be found on our website, bsgmarathon.com. Right, perfect, because they're coming up to the mid-boss of the stage, or the end-boss of this stage, whatever you want to call them. Uh, this guy takes a couple of shots to kill. What you kind of want to do is you just want to follow him along as he sways from the right to the left and back again. You can actually take all these shots that he's throwing at you because they have enough life if you are full. And that was a pretty good... You want to kill him on the left side of the screen. I actually managed to do that, so that was a pretty good kill here. And now we are into the second stage of the level. Again, you know, we've caught up with traffic, so we are just ditching our motorcycle <laughs> and make our way on top of all these cars and trucks and whatnot. And you can probably already tell, you know, there are a lot of gaps uh, between all the vehicles, so you can fall down those. However, contrary to other games in this genre, you do not lose a life. If you fall down, you only lose a little bit of health. So that is quite nice, actually another one of these strong enemies this guy takes quite a couple of hits to kill so let's see yeah, there we go and now these bastards oh my god they can ruin their life like these flying enemies they are programmed in a way to oh god, actively hinder your progress and i don't know why that dive cube didn't put me on the truck but it didn't so oh well there we go picking up another little, little bit of life here and then we go into this room now these enemies with the shields that you cannot actually um hit with your normal attacks unless they drop down their shields so what you want to do is you just oh, want to immediately go ahead and use your sub weapon to get rid of them because they cannot block that which is gonna nice. and now we have to fight two of these bastards Oh, hello. Okay, normal. Ah, yeah, there we go. Okay. Wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. And with these out of the way, we're gonna make our way to the end of the stage here. We just have to go through this very uh, interesting built truck. Like, I've never seen a truck with this kind of layout, I wanna say. But hey, here we are. Uh, just quickly getting rid of all these boxes along the way. A couple pitfalls. 
and with that we are at the boss of the stage so this is photon drifter he's the first i want to say real boss we face uh in the game because jenna queen well it's jenna queen he doesn't really count but we will see a lot of you know these kind of characters they're kind of our mirror so to speak because you know we defected from this special unit of cyber samurai guys whatever and we just want to hit him a bunch when he goes into the corner and there he is that was a uh, photon pressure <laughs> As you can see, the boss fights go by pretty quickly if you know what to do. And the reason we go, uh, we went for Photon Drifter first is now that we've defeated him, we get a new sub weapon, which will be the Photon uh, Dash. And this is a very useful ability because, you know, as a dash ability, it propels you forward quite fast. Uh, it deals damage and you are invulnerable during the time. So we basically have the trifecta of speedrunner perfection in this one ability, and that is why I want to get it first. And with that in hand, we will now make our way over to Azura's fleet. And I'm gonna shut up just a little bit because you will see what happens on screen. But the music uh, and this level is what gets most people really pumped and want to run this game. So uh, enjoy this song. So we're actually gonna go ahead and skip the mini boss here, or maybe not, because I missed up the cycle a little bit. Because if you don't hit that uh, large platform in the middle there, we just dash over it. Uh, that doesn't trigger the mini boss, so we can't just completely skip that one, which is pretty nice actually that we found that out. But again, we need the photon dash for that, and that is why we're gonna get that in this stage. But uh, yeah, we're nearly coming to the end of this already, so sorry about that song, but it will be done in just a moment. I hope you enjoyed that little trip here as we come to this mini boss. I actually no idea what this thing is called, but it's one of my least favorite mini bosses, I want to say. Uh, because it can be a little bit of a pain, so we just want to have the brain winds exposed right here. Let me go back, fade out the lasers, get it a couple times more, right over here, and then dash, and it should die. Okay. Wasn't too bad of a fight, could have been a little bit better, but overall, um, quite set aside that. But yeah, I guess you saw in the previous stage, you know, how good the photon dash actually is. Um, it allows us to basically skip parts, and not really skip parts of the level, but uh, go through them very, very fast. Because again, it deals damage, it propels us forward, so we go faster, and we are invulnerable during that time. And um, it's just a very useful ability to have during the speedrun. Um, since, you know, I said at the beginning, this game is kind of Mega Man-like because you do have the option to, uh, select which, in which order you want to tackle the stages and you get new sub-weapons every time you complete a stage. However, unlike Mega Man, uh, the bosses at the end of a stage do not have weaknesses to the weapon of another boss. So, it's not the boss order per se that we are interested in more, the order of the sub-weapons that we get out of them. Now I want to line up myself with a little vertical line in the elevator here and if I just mash the photon dash button I didn't mash hard enough because normally this guy can die on the right side of the screen basically doing nothing throughout the whole fight I was just a little bit off with the mashing there as you can see because I only need two more hits on him to you know, have him die but hey sometimes that's just the way it is you just have to have, have ugh, sorry you have to mash really hard to get that kill on the right side there now at this point, we want to go ahead and grab the second power module of the run, which will be the Soul Eater chip. Now we already have the MP region chip, which passively regenerates our MP. What the Soul Eater does is, uh, basically it gives us MP whenever we kill an enemy. So we you can see that with the little blue uh, squares that are following me around whenever I kill an enemy now. If I absorb those, I basically recharge my MP just ever so slightly. Which is pretty nice because, uh, you know, again, we want to use the photon dash as much as we can throughout the run because it just works it gets rid of you know obstacles like this very very fast and with all the chips that we have equipped that uh, makes it so we can do that pretty easily 
However, the power module selection in the game is like one of the biggest, um, well, power increases, I want to say, that you can get in the game. Because there are a total of 16 chips, if I remember correctly, that you can pick up over the course of the run. You know, like the MP region, like the Soul Eater. Obviously, you also get stuff that passively regenerates your HP, which isn't that useful during a speedrun. But you could also get a double jump, which is pretty neat, because Moon Rider does not have a double jump by standard. Uh, so there's actually a second route that some runners do where you actually um, pick up the double jump ability and then use that instead of I think the soul eater not exactly sure I've never looked into that route myself um, however the routes are pretty comparable time wise actually it's just recently that once again the you know MP build so to speak has eked out the world record ever so slightly from the double jump one so potentially this is um, still the fastest or the best loadout to have for a speedrun, so to speak. But yeah, we're nearly at the end of this auto scroller. Just one more of these eye laser barriers to go through. And uh, then we will meet the boss of the level, which, first of all, is going to be Asura because it's his fleet after all, right? So here he is. So this is Asura. Hey, Asura. Um, bye, Asura. And then we fight the actual boss of the level, which is going to be Storm Diver. There is an AI manipulation that we can do. At the start of the fight, I will run up to her and then attack her. That will actually push me back again. But if I do it correctly, she will face to the right side of the screen. Okay, she didn't do it. So we have to go for the back up where we just wait for her to go to the left side of the screen and then photon dash against the wall, which, you know, makes her stay in our herd box and she just takes a massive amount of damage. If I had got the AI manipulation, a storm diver would have looked to the right side of the screen and instead of flying to the left side she would have stood at the right side of the screen and just you know floated up on the right wall they could have just stayed at the right side and uh, have done you know the kill there obviously since she flew over to the left side that lost I don't know, a couple of seconds or so but um it is what it is it's very hard to get that manipulation right sometimes it works sometimes it just doesn't but hey we got the storm shot it's an absolute useless ability you will basically never see it to speed on unless by mistake so we now go to the lost runes make sure we actually equip the photon dash again because what this game does is every time you get a new ability it will automatically equip that one so you have to keep in mind to go ahead and manually change back to the sub weapon that you equipped previously and again we abuse a photon dash here to make easy jumps over all of these bottomless pits that we would otherwise uh fall down and just go a little bit faster than we would normally be able to. If we go through all of this here. Launch these. Go to the scrambling block. Make one de uh, slash attack. Just oh my god! I didn't. Oh my god! Yeah, I didn't have enough MP to actually go for the safety dash there. So that was a bit. Oh my god! Yeah. See, this is uh, where the game tells you like nope. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> yeah, this is actually what you do not want to see here. This is like a major screw up. What you want to do here is um, I wasn't able to get the wall jump up of that wall, even though I got up there. And uh, then things just started to spout out of control ever so slightly. Uh, but hey, we made it through anyway. And now we have the next mini boss coming up here. We want to run up to him and then do our running slash to hit both uh, weak points at the bottom there. And then just kill this torpedo thing up. Then you want to wait until it attaches itself to the wall until the brain comes out, slash it once, and then just a dash on it dies. That is that mini boss done. But as you can see, Lost Ruins Stage 1 is a very execution-heavy stage. Like, if you do just a little bit wrong there, uh, things can spiral out of control pretty quickly, and you're just scrambling to um, you know, get it right again. But hey, sometimes that is just what happens. I mean, it is a very short run, but it's also a very demanding run. Because every little mistake can cost you and other things. Because a lot of things are actually cycle based. Believe it or not, I mean, you saw it during Asura's fleet uh, previously with all the moving platforms. Those are all on a global timer. So if you were to fall down one of um, the bottomless holes there, um, everything would be slight, slightly off cycle to what you would be used to. And uh, that can be a problem. That can definitely be a problem. Kind of the same thing with Lost Runes 1 here, where the all the platforms that are moving are obviously on a, on a global cycle as well. 
So, you know, if you don't get those right, or if you mess up a little bit, they will be off the cycle that you are known to. And, uh, yeah, you have to just see how you go from there. Anyway, this is Dark Chaser. She is the next boss we're gonna face. You can already tell by the little thing that is floating behind her that she has shields going on that we have to destroy first before we're actually able to damage her. So we just want to go ahead, get a couple hits in. Edward, come down here, attack, get up. Dash, and there we go. That is the shield destroyed. She's invulnerable right now until she lowers her arm. So we want to get one hit in. It's perfect. So another couple hits in, and then when she teleports again, we can just dash until she is dead. And that will dog chase her. I mean, you might be able to tell by this point that the bosses are a little bit on the pushover uh, side of uh, if you know how to deal with them. Like, again, Things can spell out of control pretty easily if you're not careful. So if you're playing this for the first time, you probably, you know, don't know how to deal with them yet. So things can take a little while until they click, but, uh, yeah. Once you have figured all of them out, uh, the fights go by pretty quickly. Anyway, we now have the Dark Portal, our new ability, which we'll actually use a bit during the next stage, which is going to be the Laser Research um, Facility. And this is one of the hardest stages in the game, I would say. Like, uh, things just deal massive amounts of damage to you here. So let's see how this goes. First out of business, though, is oh, to go back to the Photon Dash, because obviously we want our trusty Photon Dash back. Okay. And one of the reasons this laser research base is so deadly is because of these tanks or whatever they are because they just deal a, a phenomenal amount of damage to you if they hit you so we want to really careful on them take a step forward here to spawn another soldier so i can regenerate even more mp than with only two soldiers Okay, that's that done. Pretty good. And now we're on to the next mini boss, which is gonna be Shingen. He is like this double sword samurai guy. However, once again, the photon dash rule, uh, rule supreme. He's gonna move forward up until that platform thingy in the ground there. You can see it there. Do th oh. Well, a little bit slow on the dashes, but you just do one combo of three dashes and then you just dash until he's done and that uh, fight. And that puts us into laser research stage two. And uh, this is the stage where runs can come to die because of something a little bit later in this stage. Because you can already tell or basically guess what that thing is gonna be. Because you know, it is a laser research, right? So what are they gonna research in laser research base? Well, obviously lasers. So it's not these lasers just yet, these are the mini versions of the lasers, but um, I can already deal quite a bit of damage to you if you're not careful. Gonna, uh, gonna go ahead and equip the dark portal because we have a next mini boss coming up. It is whatever this thing is supposed to be. There's gonna be a blue orb in its center right here and you do want to use the dark portal against it because it deals massive amounts of damage because it has multiple... Um, it boxes that it can use to deal damage to that and that was that boss it was a pretty good kill pretty happy with that one but after this we are now coming up to the big lasers and this is where well things can get a little bit hairy because these as you can probably already tell will deal massive amounts of damage to me if i get hit by them so i want to be a little careful here i mean you, you can damage boost through a couple of these because i am at full health and i will obviously do so but uh you also want to be really um careful yeah, well, simply because it's a marathon on i you don't want to die and have to do this all over again so i might take it a little bit slowly here and there because as you can see you know one hit of these lasers and about a third of my life is already gone so uh yeah, you don't want to do this too often But we should be fine from it. Oh my god. Can you please kill that? What the heck? He did not want to do the running slash there. 
I just wanted to kill that guy to regain a little bit more MP so I can actually make sure that I have enough for the boss fight, which will be Geo Crusher. Now, once again, we will try to manipulate his AI by jumping behind him and then having him hit us. And when he has hit us, we will be lifted off the ground a little bit because of the animation. And that will fool him into doing a jumping kick. And since he is in a jumping animation, or rather in the air, he won't be able to do his phase transition. Because if you deplete his first health bar, he actually goes into like a power stance where he, you know, powers up. He's invulnerable during that time, and the fight changes a little bit. This obviously loses your time because you cannot hit him during that, you know, power up stance. However, since he is in the air, he can't go into that animation, and we can't just go ahead and kill him in that, uh, that part. So that was the quick kill against Geo Crusher. We now get the Geo Crash ability, which is actually pretty useful. We're going to see it a couple times um, during the one, the next stage actually, which is pretty nice because we already have it equipped right now, and we're actually going to head and use it at the start of the Fallen City here. <clears throat> so the big problem in this stage, so to speak, is that big ass robot in the background because it is chasing us, it keeps shooting at us, and there's absolutely nothing we can do about that. So you just have to kind of bait out its attacks where, you know, they are not a problem for you. But as long as you keep running, things should be absolutely fine. So just keep on going then. Gonna switch to the photon dash for a second here, back to the geo crash. Get all rid of this last wall here, back to the photon dash, and uh, we are to the last part of the stage. Gonna be careful to ooh, grab this, go through here, perfect. All right, so I guess you could already tell what the boss of this stage is gonna be, right? I mean, of course, it's gonna be our little friend here. So we get a little bit of a reckoning here. Now the nice thing about a Geo Crush is it gives you massive iframes, as you can probably tell, because you can basically stay in the hurt box of this big ass robot and nothing is gonna happen to you because you just have so many iframes after using the Geo Crash. And with that, we are on to the second stage of the Fallen City. Um, same things basically still apply here. Now we just have to make sure we just uh, destroy these blocks that are blocking our way. Get it? Uh huh. Funny, funny. Ah, oh, God. Yeah, this is the section. Uh, these rocks are just perfectly timed to kind of hinder your ascent here. So personally, I just like to wait them out. Obviously, you don't have to do that. You could be able to climb that little chute without having to wait for the rocks, but it is very precise. It is very finicky. So I like to not do that, even though it would probably save a little bit of time here. Okay. Anyway. Our friend is back, so let's do basically the same thing we did to him earlier as well. Let's just slash him and then use a Geo Crash. And that was only three of them. That's pretty good. It was a very fast fight. Now we have a little escape sequence coming up where we have to escape the flames. I'm gonna have to wait for these flames to come back again and just make my way up here. Uh, another fun thing is if you just stay to the left side here, you can actually just wall jump onto that platform so you actually do not have to go to the right side of the screen at all. Which, you know, obviously saves a little bit of time here. Which is pretty nice. And then we're just making our way to the end of the stage. Hmm. Now for the boss fight, um, we're gonna set up a quick kill here where we, you know, wall jump off the left wall. And then we are able to run up to Flamestalker here, and hopefully when I am there... Ah, I missed the quick kill by just a little bit, as you can see. Like, he just has a little bit of health left, so I have to wait for him to go through, you know, his power-up uh, animation where he goes back to the middle of the screen and then uh, get rid of the last couple of... Um, HPs for him and with that we are now uh, we now have the flame run ability This is also the second to last stage on the level select screen So we now go into the desalination facility, but before you do before we do that uh, double I think you wanted to say something uh, Yes, I, I did indeed want to ask if we had time for a few donations uh, There will be a stage coming up after the next one, which is another auto scroller So if you hold up for I don't know two minutes or so we can do them there if that is okay 
Uh, uh, that because, is fine. You know, give, give people to more more time to get even more donations in. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we just got the flame wing ability. It is absolutely useless for a speedrun. Um, again, you don't want to see it. The photon dash is just way too good. Uh, it outclasses everything else, like by a tremendous amount, I want to say. Um, but yeah, desalination facility, it's, you know, the mandatory water level for these kind of games, I want to say. So we're just going to make our way here, grab a little bit of MP. Oop. I shorted that jump just a tad. And yeah, it's basically, you know, the token underwater level where everything is slowed down quite heavily. So you, know, you can see how the movement just slows down. We're going to skip an encounter here by double dashing once we hit that little platform there. Otherwise, we'll be locked in with these two enemies that we have to kill. And we are already at the stage boss. Now, this guy can be a real pain. Uh, because you have this moving platform, you have lasers, but we hit them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times, and there's just dash him, and he is done. Because otherwise, you have to stand on this little moving platform, your movement is slowed down, he shoots lasers at you, he has projectiles and whatnot, and it's an all around pain to fight this guy. But with this strategy, he's uh, a bit of a pushover, actually, I wanna say. You just have to time your kick dashes a little bit because you are a little bit low on MP, so you can't just dash him down. I have to do a little bit more work here. And now in the second part of uh, the level, we... Now, it's a little bit of a maze uh, where you have to hit these switches to make the water rise and lower. However, what we're going to do here, we're going to spawn an enemy up the top left here, then hit the switch, hold down the jump button, so we this, you know, keep in the jumping animation while the water drains so we can move by the platform that has been lowered. So this section here is not on the water when we are here, which means there are also no enemies and our movement isn't hindered, which is a nice little skip that we do. And with that, we're just going to continue down the stage to the... Oh, I got stuck at the ceiling there. But I do want to save my MP because we have the next mini boss coming up. I call her the Mermaid. I don't know what the honor orders actually call her, but we just equipped the Geocrash. Wait until she spawns in Geocrash on top of her. Do a running slash and then more Geocrashes. And that was the Mermaid. Good foot on drift again. And we are up to the last part of the stage here. Just gonna jump up that guy, let go of ru the running uh, button for just a second here to slash uh, the mobile hat that was in our way. Now, I actually mentioned, I haven't mentioned the fishes yet. The fishes, again, are programmed in a way that they are actively trying to, you know, get in your way to try and hinder you, which is kind of devious. But, uh, you know, with a little bit of... Uh, patience on your own you should make it past them now it is faster to just wall jump up this chute instead of waiting for the water to rise just gonna go ahead grab a couple more refills and then we're on to the boss of this level which is gonna be hydromancer if i got the name right there is a quick kill here where we jump to the center platform and then do a running slash into him and if we get that we can get the quick kill uh but it is very precise to do so let's see if we get it and otherwise the fight will just take about five seconds longer so and we did not get it. Okay, so we just have to do this and... So you see, I had to do an extra jump at the end there to actually get rid of his last uh, bit of HP that he had. Uh, but otherwise, about as good as a fight as he can. Same. And with that, we have cleared all the stages on the level select screen. So in the best Mega Man tradition, we are now into the last two levels of the run. The first of which was going to be the space elevator. So obviously, we are going into space. I mean, where else could a game like this end but in space? Right? That is just the way the things are here. Um, the first stage in the space elevator will be another auto scroller where we are on our bike again and before i give it over to double to read the donations there's one thing i want to mention here because at the beginning of the stage we're going to fight a couple of these trucks now how these trucks work is uh, a soldier will come out at the end of it and start shooting you and you have to kill the soldier to destroy the truck for whatever reason don't don't uh question it just roll with it uh, the problem is, I obviously want to use my special shot that I just used here to kill the soldiers because it kills them instantly. However, since that thing is like, you know, this snaking shot thing, there's actually a dead zone inside of the special shot. And if you are exactly dead center behind the truck, you will not hit the truck itself because for some reason the special shot is only able to hit the soldier like the truck doesn't even have its own hitbox you can hit it with your normal shots but not the special shot for some reason it confuses the heck out of me but it's just the way it is and um with that double over to you 
All right, most certainly, let's get these donations read. Firstly, we've got, uh, we've got 10 euros from Zed with a uh, question. Perhaps you can answer it. Uh, why does the moon look so scary? Well, because, like I said in the beginning, you know, he, he was supposed to be a baddie, but then he turned into a goodie, but obviously he still kept his armor on. So, you know, he was supposed to be looking intimidating to people, but they don't mess with him, and I guess they achieved the right thing with that look, judging by the uh, comment here. <laughs> okay, and the, the other donation is five euros from Killer Chair, saying, Yo, Ishima! I, I tried my Yo. best to copy... Chair, I tried my best to copy the way you wrote it. I'm hoping it's good. <laughs> uh, Yo. For, furthermore, Killer Chess says, You're going so fast, it gets the heart pumping. You could say you have a wild heart. Winky face. Um, oh my god. Yeah, so if you guys right, haven't heard about wild point. hearts, go ahead and play that game, please. It is phenomenal. <laughs> and yeah, both of those donations, in addition to the 30 euro anonymous donation we received earlier, have all been going to the... Bit more incentive for our closing run for this event of Octopath Traveler. Nope. Uh, between the uh, uh, which story is uh, is going to be played, Ophelia or Hanit, and to give you an update on that, currently uh, Ophelia is in the lead with 47 euros, but Hanit is right behind it at 40. So a very close bit war. Nice. Excited to figure out who's going to win it in the end. Do love our close bit wars here. Uh, this is actually the boss of the stage, the Sunseeker. He's actually the final boss of the game. Uh, same logic applies to him. If you are exactly behind him when he's in front of you, you will miss your special shot. So you want to be just a little bit off center of him. And with that, we have completed the auto scroller section of the game. I think that worked perfectly out with the donations that were coming in. So thank you guys so much for that. Please keep donating. We are still not at the end of the marathon. So you have still more time to, you know, get your messages in, get your donations in, get those incentives met, or as in the case of Octopath Traveler, uh, your preferred run being shown. Um, yeah, this is a space elevator. I really love the music uh, in this part because you know it has this rising tension to it that's going on, which is just awesome. I just really love listening to the soundtrack in the game as a whole. It's phenomenal work by Dominic. Uh, I actually met him during ESA a little bit, you know, last month ago or so, which was pretty cool. He's a very chill guy, and uh, he obviously loves making music for video games, and it shows. But the soundtrack to this game is just stellar. As soon as I heard that, I just went out there and bought the soundtrack, which you can actually do, I think, on... It released officially now. You can already get it on Steam, but now it's also on... Um, God damn it, Spotify. Thank you. My god. Imagine not remembering Spotify. Anyway, it's another, you know, auto scroller -y section of the game. You obviously have to kill all the enemies before the elevator starts moving again, so you want to go ahead and do that as efficiently as possible. And then you just have these sections where, you know, just avoid the obstacles. No biggie. Uh, one thing to note is that you will not get any MP refills during this uh, stage at all. So obviously the Soul Eater and the MP region chip come in really handy at this point. Because, you know, as you can see by our unmoving MP bar, we are basically topped up all the time. Which is pretty nice if it is in itself. I think it's one more set of enemies and then we are into the boss fight. Indeed, here we go. So once again, we equip the Geo Crash. Uh, because the boss fight consists of these four faces that are mounted to the wall, it's a very weird boss. I have no idea how that one came to be, but hey. You see, we just want to go ahead and geocache through it. And then hit it a couple more times, and that should make quick work of it, actually. So, you know, one, two, a jumping kick on top of... I'm gonna say jumping kick on top of this thing. Worked, but it also didn't. Most of the heads taken care of. Sir, can you please die? Thank you. All right. Okay, and with that, we are actually already into the last level of the run. We're getting really close to the end here. There's only like two or three minutes left, I want to say, in this particular game. As I can see, everything just goes by blindingly fast. Like, I'm trying to keep up with the commentary as best as I can, but obviously I'm failing just a little bit here and there because I just cannot explain everything. 
um, because, you know, it's just happening way too quickly on screen here. But this is the space station. Obviously, this is the last stage of the level. And it is uh, very execution giving up. Everything, like I said before, is on a global uh, timer. So if I just make a slight mistake, everything will be off. And uh, I am then scrambling for survival. Because there is a lot going on here with these lasers and the moving platforms and everything. You have to manage your MP levels so you know that you can actually dash through all of these snipers and dodge them. Gonna make it through this section. Uh, taking my sweet time here, but hey, that was pretty good, even if a little bit slow. That is kind of the hard section done. It's really just that uh, horizontal laser that we dodged at the end there. Just we're gonna make our. Oh! Let's put up that part just a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up these refills and then we are on to the boss of this stage this is not the la last boss just yet uh you might remember him though this is shingen again he is back for a rematch um same exact fight though We're just gonna kick a couple steps forward slash dash done and with that we are now up to the last stage slash the last boss fight of the game time will be after the fight uh, when the two guys run at each other and uh, we have a white flash on screen, but it's just not yet Anyway, this is Sunseeker. He's the last big bad. He wants to enslave humanity and all these fun things We're gonna be uh, manipulating his AI by running at him and jumping before we reach him That makes him do a rising kick of his own So we can then move into the position where he is on screen right now Just like that, we're gonna geo crash we're Gonna geo crash again so we're gonna just hit him a bunch to complete his next health bar. That puts him into his third phase where he grows wings. We're gonna wait down here. Geo crash. Wait for him to come back. Geo crash. Oh, I don't have another geo crash. Okay. Anyway, and uh, time. And there we are. <laughs> Sorry, that came a little bit out of the blue, but um, yeah, that is the run. That is Wrenchful Guardian Moonrider. It's a sweet little game. Like if you go for 100% completion, um, it takes, I think I did it in like three and a half hours or something. So even if you try to get, you know, all the power modules and everything, power modules and everything, it's still a pretty short game, but it is a very good game. Like it is one of my favorite games this year so far. Like, it's just a joy to play. The music, as you've probably heard throughout the run, is phenomenal. Do get that soundtrack if you like this kind of music. Do get this game and play it and speed on it because, uh, well, there are a couple of speedrunners. We can always use more in the community. Um, it's a great community to be in too because, you know, the developer are also very supportive of the speedrun community for their games. I don't even think I mentioned it at the start, but this is actually by the same developers that also brought us a Blazing Crow just a couple years ago, which was a very Contra-inspired game if you've played that. Also a phenomenal title, that will probably will be able to get that pretty cheap um, at this point at well. And this is their next game, and it is awesome. I really love it. I love speedrunning it. I love to show it at more events like this and for more good causes. And with that, um, yeah, that's everything for me for this marathon. Uh, I've been Ashma. Uh, if you want to see more samurai games being speedrun, go ahead and check me out on Twitch. I recently completed my casual playthrough of Like a Dragon Ishin, and I'm going to be starting to speedrun that next week, probably. I'm currently completing my speedrun notes on that so I can, you know, learn another game that I can maybe submit to BSG Annual. We'll see about that. Anyway, guys, thank you for having me. Have a great time, everyone. Good luck to the rest of the runners coming up for this event. And um, that is everything for me. Yes, and yeah, and thank you, Ashma. Don't 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 forget yourself. You've do, you've done very well here to showcase Vigil Guardian Moonrider. But now we will be jumping to a quick intermission, after which uh, we will be returning with Kirby's Dreamland, a race, uh, a race between Dunko Gothic and Ghost Senpai. And I will also be ending my hosting shift here and will be leaving you in the very capable hands of Tiny Tim. So yes, enjoy the rest of BFG Online 8. <laughs>